Hello everyone and thank you for joining this new DIY Engineers video. In this video we'll be going over how to make your own printed circuit board. We'll design the schematic, the actual printed circuit board and place the components where you want them to. We'll go over how to order the printed circuit board online. And then we'll go ahead, order them, receive them and test them. I also went ahead and printed a 3D printed part so that you can see that you can make a full prototype and test it and have it look nice. So let's jump right into it. So now let's jump right into it and start designing our printed circuit board. So we're in ECEDA, which you can download for free in ECEDA.com to design your own printed circuit board. So the first thing we'll do is click new and go straight to a schematic. And let's start inserting some of the components that we need for our printed circuit board. Here I'm going to go ahead and enter some part numbers that I researched in LCSC Electronics. Uh, which are parts that could be placed by JLC PCB into your printed circuit board. You can go ahead and go to lcsc.com and, and research some of the parts if you want to use diff different ones. Um, so just to make it quicker, like I said, I'm putting the part number. So first I put the electrical connector. Now I'm researching this other one. This will be the actual resistor. And it's a 2000 ohm resistor. Next we'll be putting our 2N2222 transistor. This will be used to switch on and off the LED whenever it receives a signal. So let's start and go ahead and connect some of the components in the diagram. one will be the LED kit and the other one will be the 12 volts and these are just electrical uh, connectors where we can put some wires screw them and easily add our components um, and remove them if needed so LCSC doesn't have our PIR sensor so I'm going to put it here just so we can add the right component and have the right footprint in our PCB diagram so we're going to have to buy it from somewhere else, either eBay or wherever you want to buy it from. So we continue making some of these connections in our schematic. Now we're going with our 12 volts to our PIR sensor as well as our LED. And let's just rearrange a little bit for easier to make it easier to visualize all right and we're done with the actual schematic so now the next step would be to actually make this into a pcb so we need to pick some of the dimensions for a printed circuit board i'm going to go ahead and make it rectangular with round edges and there it is. Now I start placing the components into the board. I went ahead and actually changed what shows up on top. So just so it's easier and make sure we don't forget which one's which. So I want the name and not necessarily um, the prefix or anything like that. Change this to 2K so it shows us a 2K in our diagram in our PCB diagram, should call it. I'll go ahead and put some text that actually will show up when you order your PCB. Just, you know, just as an example, you could write whatever you want, your name, test one, whatever. Go ahead and make this um, breadboard area a little bit bigger so we can fit some other stuff, some holes that I'm going to put in some, some of the corners. Those are actual holes that will be made into the board if you want to attach it to something whether it's a 3d printed part or whatever so here i'm going to go ahead and add the holes when i'm to be four millimeter holes you can make it whatever you want in your example and i'm going to start actually routing uh the traces the electrical traces between all components now i'm going to the first routing was on the top layer. These are going to be on the bottom layer. Go 
and that's how it will look. Now you can see that the length of the longest trace is almost 43 millimeters. This is key because we also need to define the trace width. So I'm going to go to this website and I'll put the link in the description of this video. Uh, this thickness is based on what we're going to order from JLC PCB. And then the trace length, as we said, it was 43 millimeters. And then you can see that for internal layers, which most of ours will be external, but just to be safe, internal layers, the required width is 0 0.15 millimeters. And now if we go back into our design, we can then compare this and see, you know, what did we pick? So let me pick this one, which is the longest one. And it has some width that is larger than that. Also, just for reference, I did base it on 0.3 milliamps, which is twice the actual design current of our LED. And then here we can also go into the design rules and see that the track width was set up for 0.25 millimeters. So all our tracks are set up for that. So we should be good to go. And our traces are able to handle the current because the overall resistance is not exceeding the, um, it's not above the maximum. So here we can see how it will look once we go into placing the order for our PCB. We can set some of the specifications to how we want it. In this case, I changed mine to blue because I like blue. And you can see how it looks. Green is the standard, so you will get it faster if you actually order to be a green color. And you can change the copper weight. This is another variable that I changed when we were calculating uh, the required trace width. So one ounce is the standard width. Sorry, the standard weight. <clears throat> and here we're picking where we want the components to be added during the SMT edition. So I put it at the top. Here you can see some of the components that will be added. So you click next. And then after that, once it loads, you'll see how it looks. Now the engineer would actually go and review this before they go ahead and approve it for fabrication. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what I received after I placed my order for my printed circuit board. All right, so here it is. I got my shipment from JLC PCB for my printed circuit board. So let's take a look. You can see it comes very well wrapped. So let's unwrap it and see. All right, here are the PCVs unwrapped. You can see they came assembled, quantity of five. So let's go ahead and take a further look. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the PCP. You might notice that I went ahead and soldered three wires that are actually male to female uh, breadboard wires that will be used to connect to our sensor. Go ahead and take a quick look at our PCV that is pretty much ready to be wired to all our components for this project. You can see even the traces. Now let's go ahead and add all the components. We add our PR sensor. Go ahead and add our battery clip or battery holder connector and we add our LED kit which does come with a built-in resistor and then you can see how it works as soon as the PR sensor gets in motion our LED will flash or turn on as designed pretty cool huh So now let's go ahead and put her in our casing. This is a quick casing that I designed and 3D printed. You don't need to do it, but I just want to show it so that you can see how after we do this type of project, and we can also add it to 3D printed parts to make, you know, a product. In this case, you know, it's still a prototype, but, you know, I have it all with its own casing and lid. 
and we have our PR sensor and flash. I could have made the printed circuit board a little more compact as well as the 3D print case, but you get the point, and which is the idea. Now, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and thank you very much. Bye. See you in the next one.